Paul, you just finished up with the 2014 World Championships. Um, give us a little uh, feedback on what you thought about the tournament, the courses, the layouts, things like that. Um, the courses are quality. Uh, you know, the Milo course and the Blue Lake was just beautiful, the way they had it laid out. Um, Trojan was okay. Could have lived without that one, but. Milo West Meads are always a great one to play, and then the new one, Blue Lake, which I've never played before um, prior to this tournament. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun, and I, I like that you can birdie every hole, but you can also easily bogey every hole. Uh, so that was, that was one of my favorite things about the courses. And my thoughts about the tournament was it was an epic battle. Uh, Hulaberry had the lead for most of the tournament. Uh, he ended up finishing fourth. Ricky was up there pretty much the whole time also. And uh, Nate and myself were able to sneak up there towards the end and make the final four. And uh, once the four of us got up there, we kind of ran away from the rest of the field. Uh, I think going into the semifinals, Nate was in fourth and he had a nine stroke lead on fifth. So it was pretty secure that the four of us were going to make the final nine, and we knew that it was pretty much we could look at a head-to-head -head, head -head battle um, the rest of the the rest of the holes and the whole way through. And the way it finished was one that will probably never be forgotten. What was going through your head uh, knowing that a lot of the time in the final couple rounds that you were down by four, anywhere from four to seven strokes? I don't know. I always seem to be putting myself in a really bad position going into like the back nine holes, and especially at Blue Lake uh, on Friday. I was back six to Euliberry with four holes to play, and uh, he was actually, he was the current leader at that moment, and uh, I was able to erase four strokes in those four holes and get within two of Euliberry um, going into the semis, the semifinals and uh, with the final nine also. So that was a huge finish for myself. And then uh, the semifinals, the semifinals on Saturday was, uh, <laughs> it was something special. Uh, I was playing really good, starting out really well. Burning a lot of the holes to start. Um, I think I was within two. I was within two of the lead, uh, which was Ricky at the time. Ricky and Yuli might have been tied. But that hole eight, hole eight, pretty simple hole. I mean, the other three twoed it. But I had uh, the first drive, didn't make it in bounce. Had to re tee. The second drive was even worse than the first one. It wasn't even close to making it in bounds. And the third one was actually the worst of the three, but it hit the tree and kicked in bounds. And I uh, missed my putt from there. Ended up taking a seven, giving up five strokes on that one hole. So right then and there, I was back seven strokes with 19 holes to play. And uh, just that, I don't know. I just. Never thought I was out of it, even when I was seven strokes back. Um, I don't know what it was, but I knew um, I knew I just had to keep fighting and keep birdieing and just putting the pressure on, even though I was so far back. And uh, so after that seven, we ended up playing 24, 24 holes after that because after the final nine, Ricky and I ended up tied. And uh, today is the first time I actually look back on it since the tournament, and it's been about 36 hours, or maybe about 48 hours, somewhere around there. Um, it's the first time I look back out, look back, and uh, I actually shot 20 under in the final 24 holes with a bogey in the final nine. Um, I don't think I could ask for a better way to finish a tournament than the way I did. And, just the raw emotion that was <laughs> put out there. Uh, I can't wait to honestly watch some film because it was, it was the most intense disc golf I've ever seen and been a part of. Uh, and, uh, 
down though. I'm still shocked the way that it went down. You know, what what is what is this victory to you? What does it mean? Uh, it's it's just a huge mark in history. The only other person to win three in a row was Ken Climo and he went on to win nine in a row. And uh, three world titles is a spot that only two people before me have ever been, and that's Nate Doss and Climo. And uh, you know, just to be in a part of something that only two people have ever done. And a part of something that Climo has only ever done is just, it's, it's insane to think about and uh, to, to be able to have three world titles at the age of 24 um, is way more than what you know I could have ever asked for, but I've been working hard to accomplish it and, you know, it's nice to see the hard work paying off and, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's honestly going to push me to play harder just to chase a climb out, but uh, I know everyone who plays this sport who wants a world title dreams about taking down this record or just winning a world title in general. Uh, so it, it means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot more to the sport. And, uh, Ken Climo has also walked away with the win. Uh, what, what, uh, what did he win? He won his second Masters World Championship World Champion title. Um, he ended up beating Barry, Barry Schultz by I think one, and he had to come back also in the final nine to take down the victory. So we had two. How many Innova players walking away with first place at this world? Um. I believe every men's division was won by an end of a player, except for the senior legends, but that's because no senior legends player is sponsored, I believe. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's a few in the women's. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. They didn't really pay attention to it. all the divisions. And now that this tournament's over, what is your next tournament? Take a week off. Well, not a week off. Take the weekend off um, from tournaments, and then uh, head to the Hamburg sometime next week. Start preparing for that, and then New York the following weekend, and then it's a pretty lengthy break until the USDGC. But uh, that's one I'm yet to win. I'm really determined to win. And uh, after that final round last year, I think I finally figured out what I need to do on that course. And, it's just attack it, uh, attack it and not, you know, take the blows. Um, it's, it's not beneficial when you play a layup game and you still make mistakes because now you're getting double penalized because you're way out of place um, on that course. So this year I'm really going to attack that course. I could have three hot rounds and one terrible round, or I could have three terrible rounds and one hot round, but um, I already got my game plan laid out for USDGC. It's written down, sitting in a book until after these next few tournaments, but it'll definitely be a, a new way I'm playing the tournament this year. Currently planning our next trip. Um, we have the Brent Hambrick Memorial in Columbus, Ohio. So I'm looking up hotels for that, <clears throat> and then uh, just planning how long the drive is, which it'll be 13 to 14 hours, depending on traffic, it says. Um, and then I am currently looking at hotels in New York now for the Rochester, whatever, open um, the name change, so I don't know exactly what it's technically called now. Um, so we just got a two-week trip that we're planning uh, to the two NTs, Columbus, Ohio, and, and Rochester, New York. <clears throat> and then we're headed straight back here to start working and training uh, for the USDGC. Uh, and then also looking up hotels for that. So just planning out the little two-week trip and then start looking ahead to USDGC after that. And uh, pretty much it shirtless because we're about to start a workout uh, start getting on that train again now that we're back in central Oklahoma and 
Yeah, it's pretty much how this morning started so far. It's hot outside. That's for sure. I'm scared What's it out, out there? outside in practice. Yesterday it was 105, 103, um, which is not bad when you get to go in the pool. But we get to go practice disc golf today. So, kind of kind of curious how it's going to feel out there. Um, I just went to the car and it felt horrible. Yeah, it's going to be horrible. Drink lots of water. Now that we got a new Huck Lab. New Huck Lab. Freaking. Kept ice in it all day. Didn't melt. Kayla used it for her volleyball game. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Hydro flask. So, all right, yeah, I gotta finish looking up hotels for New York now, and then USDGC. So, pretty excited. The year's coming to an end. It's been a long year. A lot of traveling, and it's only gonna get more and more travels. More and more we play. And uh, how many how many miles have we put on the car so far? It's up to forty. The car is at 40, I gotta get my oil change, oil change today too, can't forget that. Um, the car is at I think 48,000 miles, I bought it last year in November with 10,010 miles, so we've put about 30 plus thousand miles on it this year, 30 plus thousand, which is a pretty good number. How many pairs of tires have we gone through? One, we got two new back tires in GBO because they were dull and then we had to get two new front tires at in Oregon at Worlds because one of them had a huge tear in it we ran something over I don't know what it was but it wasn't popped they were still good but one of them had a huge gaping hole in it and it could have been bad if, we, if Cody didn't catch it thanks Cody yes Cody did a lot at that at Worlds. A lot more than we could ever ask for. He even washed the car. Detailed it. Which it looked pretty nice. It looked pretty pretty nice. Now it's dirty and disgusting after our, our what, twenty eight to thirty hour drive? Yeah, twenty eight plus hour drive, yeah. Now it's full of dust and it was full of dust at, at Worlds because we had to drive into dirt parking lots, but it's even worse now. So, with all our bug collection on the front, it's not as bad as when we went up north and headed through. That was pretty bad. That was bad. <clears throat> but yeah, now I just gotta find these hotels. I actually gotta find where the disc golf course is and look as close as possible. So that uh, means I gotta open up another page, figure this stuff out. So, yep, yeah, that's it's a typical morning of non-tournament disc golf. That's where we are right now. Uh, Columbus, Ohio at the Brent Hambrick Memorial. This is the west course, I believe. That's the permanent over there. This is the west, the temporary side.
This is their this is the diet here. Wings, spaghetti, and cheesy pretzels. and their membership, all our supporters, all our volunteers. I present to you the 2014 BHMO Open Champion, Paul Macbeth. Yeah. All right, first off, I gotta thank uh, everyone that helped out, Paul, helped Paul out came out and worked on this course. I got here Wednesday and I saw people out here working, which is pretty rare this year um, to have the course up that early. So I appreciate it and all your staff. And uh, let me just thank some sponsors, Into the Champion Games, Grim Bags. He's been with me for years now, so I need to give them a shout out. And uh, everyone that came out and watched in the rain, um, I know none of us wanted to be there. And you guys were out there cheering us on. And, watching us throw it all over the place. So thank you guys for watching and all the spotters. I know I didn't want to be out there. I don't know how you guys did it. So thank you guys for coming out. I want to play with you. That was fun. So.